What's up guys, I'm Brad Rodriguez from Fix This, Build That. And today I have a special guest in the shop, Pete from DIY Projects with Pete. We made two projects. Pete, tell them about the one that we put on your channel today. Yeah, definitely. So we made this accent lamp and it has a concrete base, walnut side, and then this Edison bulb to kind of warm things up. I think it turned out really nice. Absolutely, and go. you can check that project out on Pete's channel. There's a link down below in the description. Uh, so I helped him out with the walnut top and then Pete helped me out with the concrete tops for these. I made two outdoor side tables with cedar bases. I made both of these side tables out of four cedar two by fours, one bag of concrete, and only two power tools. So check it out, it's a great project. Let's see how we did it. For this project, I wanted to show what you can do with a basic tool set. I'll only be using two power tools, a cordless circular saw and a hammer drill, both from Rigid's 18 volt lineup. I'll also use a small variety of basic tools like clamps, a carpenter square, and a pocket hole jig. We started by building the form for the concrete tops. I used a leftover piece of 3 quarter inch melamine from another project for the form. I ripped four 1 and a half inch strips the full length of the sheet for the walls of the form. I absolutely love the convenience of this cordless circ saw here because I can make all these dust spewing cuts out in the yard and I don't have to worry about dragging out extension cords or even being near an outlet. I cut two of the long strips in half and then I ganged together three of those pieces and cut them down to 20 inches leaving me two long sides two short sides, and one divider. With the dusty part done, we moved into the shop and started building the form. We clamped and screwed down one long side using a countersink bit and two inch screws. We use the factory edges here on the large sheet and this will give you a good 90 degree corner. To make sure the second long edge was parallel to the first one, we used the divider in the other short end as a spacer and put that long edge against it and screwed it in place. The tops are 20 by 20, so Pete measured in 20 inches from the end and then we attached the center divider. Using that divider to get two tops from one form makes things a lot easier when you vibrate and screed the concrete layer. We secured the other end and then vacuumed the form clean. And here's where Pete showed me a cool tip to get the silicone bead in the form for those nice clean edges. Because last time I just siliconed it and I used the trowel and it was a little hard to get into the edges. Yeah, and that, and that works. It is just a little bit harder to get the perfect finish, especially if this is your first time building counters. Right. This is my second, so your I'm second. a pro. <laughs> okay. Well, let's go well, ahead. Let's do it. Yeah. Like I said, it only takes a couple minutes. We're going to make sure there's a straight edge on the side and then leave about almost a quarter inch gap, eighth inch to a quarter inch gap. Pete taped around the whole form, leaving about a quarter inch gap for the caulk. Then we applied the caulk smooth it out with a wet finger, and then remove the tape. You want to remove this right away and don't let it set up at all. Going back over the caulk one more time with a wet finger smooths out any little lips left from the tape. This was a cool little trick to make sure that the caulk went exactly where I wanted it and didn't get all over the sides when I was smoothing it out like I did last time. While the caulk was drying, we went back outside to cut the parts for the base. I'm using cedar 2x4s here from a local building supply store for the base, and you don't need a miter saw to get decent cross cuts on these boards. Just clamp a carpenter square to your board and use it to guide you for that 90 degree cut. Each base is made from just 11 boards in three different sizes, and these all come out of two 2x4s. After cutting the first of each similar size board, we just laid that board back on top of the remaining 2x4 and butted it up against the end. Then I used a spacer to set where my carpenter square needed to go, the spacer is just the width between the outside edge of my circular saw and the outside edge of the circular saw blade. This makes short work of cutting down all the pieces. Just make sure you have proper support or a helping hand so the boards don't bind up and drop off or cause tear out at the end of the cuts. With the form ready to go, we started mixing the concrete. I found the best way to mix concrete is have somebody else do it. Seriously though, Pete made this look so much easier than the first time I had a go at it. But I think the keys here are going to be adding some water first, using a big enough mixing tub, and just adding water as needed until you get that oatmealish consistency. We used a garden hoe here, which works great, but you can also use a shovel to mix the concrete too. I started transferring the mix from the tub to the form while Pete worked it into place. He was pushing it into the corners and the edges and doing a little bit of vibrating in the form along the way. I used a scrap of wood to screed the surface after it was full and I was sawing it back and forth as Pete filled any voids exposed by the screeding. This 80 pound bag of concrete that we used was just slightly less than we needed so we did actually have to dip into a second bag. After doing a little more vibrate and get all the air bubbles out, we set the form back inside to dry overnight. 
Keeping with the minimalist theme here, I decided to use the handheld pocket hole jig for the joints. You can pick up one for just about 40 bucks, and while it's a little slower than larger models, it gets the job done just as well. All these boards but the upright legs get pocket holes on each end. Assembly is very straightforward and it goes really quick. I used glue and 2.5 inch exterior screws for each joint and started by making two U-shaped assemblies which will be the sides without the top pieces. Next I joined the sides with a front and back stretcher, clamping the boards firmly in place before securing them. Then I came back and added a top piece to the sides. Now the tops would have gotten in the way of my drill while I was attaching the stretchers, so that's why I added them afterwards. The last piece is a base stretcher which is centered between the sides and shores up the strength of the table. I sanded the whole base with 150 and 220 grit sandpaper. Okay, let's be serious here. About two seconds after this shot, I grabbed my random orbital sander, but technically you don't need it for this build. After sanding, I applied four coats of an oil-based outdoor spar urethane. I thinned each coat with mineral spirits to make it easy to wipe on with a rag here. I just love how this brings out the depth and the character of the cedar. An oil-based finish is much better than a water-based in my opinion to bring out that color. The next morning, Pete was back and we took the concrete out of the forms. We removed the sides and I sanded the edges with 120 grit to keep them from chipping. We were in a time crunch here for Pete's visit, so we probably took these out a little early, and you can see here how wet this hop still was. To help the tops dry a little faster though, we flipped them over onto some scrap pieces of wood and let the air flow all around the concrete to help it dry. The corners and edges of the top had some voids in them from the form, so I used a little leftover concrete to fill the holes in the gaps. I took a colander to sift out the large aggregate from the mix and made a paste that I applied to the needed areas. Last time I used a Portland cement to do this, and I'd recommend going that route or using a finer sifter for your mix. It was a little harder to apply than I thought it would be, and it just took me a little bit more time to get it into all the little bitty holes. After the repairs dried, I sanded everything lightly with 320 grit paper to try and not crumble off the repairs. Then I sealed the tops and the sides with concrete sealer using a microfiber cloth. It was easier to control the sealer when pouring it onto the cloth versus straight onto the concrete. And if you want to be extra careful, you can wait the full 28 days before applying the sealer for a full cure. But I left the bottom unsealed to allow moisture to transfer out and further curing. And I did the same thing on my concrete coffee table, and it's been totally fine after 9 months. Before putting the tops on the bases, I attached some rubber feet on the bottom of each table to keep them off the ground and keep them away from any standing water. I used a dab of silicone on the corners of the top, and then the weight of the concrete top is going to help hold that down to the base. These side tables turned out great, and I love how they go with the rest of the patio furniture. I'll have a link to the playlist with the sofa, the coffee table, as well as the patio cooler if you want to check those projects out too. Thanks to Rigid Power Tools for sponsoring this video and being an awesome partner of Fix This Build That. There's a link down below in the description where you can find more details on the Cirque Saw and the Hammer Drill, as well as all their power tools and the promotions they have going on right now. If you want to build your own outdoor side table, there's a link down below in the description. You can find the drawings and the plan, everything you'll need to do it down there. It was really awesome to have Pete out in the shop for this collaboration. Make sure you go check out his video on that concrete accent lamp that he did. It was a really cool project. If you're not subbed to the channel already, I'd love to have you as part of the team. And until next time, guys, get out there and build something awesome.